Well, hi, everyone. Welcome back into the studio. Okay, it's the next morning here, and I let, uh, you know, because I started that one late last night, later in the afternoon. Um, and so here I'd left this covered. This is the cafeteria tray that I use here, see? And it just keeps your paints really nice. It kept my paints really nice all night long here. And there's still just a little bit of water here from where I misted it. Uh, you know, I missed the lid and I missed this. It does, you know, with some of the paper palettes, create a little bit of a wrinkle right in here. And if you just, if you don't like that, just, you know, cut off part of it here so you have a clean spot. But it does keep it, look at this, it's still, this is still wet right in here where I had that extender. So I could probably take a little bit of water, yeah, and back out and clean up some of this stuff right in here if I wanted to, where we could work on our um, our roses this morning. So you see, it's a nice, uh, you know, if you're, if you're painting through the day and stuff, this is a nice way to kind of preserve it. You have to, you have to think about it, you know, when you have a tube of paint, uh, you know, what keeps the tube of paint from drying out? Basically all of the humidity and stuff that's inside this tube, right? So whenever you seal up your paints, whether you put saran wrap over the top or whatever you want to do, you want to make sure that you create, increase the moisture a little bit and create a humid environment, then your paints will, will not dry out. That's the main ticket okay so what I did this morning let's go back up over here so you know I looked at this this morning when I came in everything's dry now the thing about acrylics is that acrylics will dry a little bit darker ours dry about 10 percent darker so we know that and so you might have to come back and readjust values now it looks you know almost to the same lightness that's here but the depth of color is n of the light is not quite where I want it on this particular rose or this one here I love the textures that are in here but I could do a little bit more now a lot of times, most of the time, I would move on to the rest of my roses, to the rest of my thing, and then I'll come back and revisit that center of interest. I tell you to do that all the time in other videos. Go back. I call her the queen. She rules this composition, and I'll come back and revisit her, and I still will. But a lot of these roses are going to be controlled by these because I'm going to set this light. So I know I want, you know, even though in the photo this is a little light right here, I'm going to want to make it a little bit darker. So I want to control this one a little bit more. So these are the two roses that I added from Photoshop. And so I want to, I want to, uh, um, I want to basically get a little bit lighter, softer look to them just a little bit more. Okay. So I want to, I want to work on that. So one of the things I love to do, and let me just show you this because it's, it works really well. So everything's dry. I'm going to take a larger brush. I'll take some extender medium and I paint this over the rose. Now what this also does is this wakes up the colors all the way around it to what everything was looking like when it was still kind of wet. And, you know, if you're ever going to judge a painting, have you ever noticed how varnish kind of lifts it up, makes it, you know, uh, look so much better? And that's because you're adding a clear medium that's actually magnifying the light, the light passage. Well, extender does it, even though it's, it's not going to be permanent. It's going to, uh, it's going to dry down. You can do that. But what I can do here, what I want to do is take a little bit of the Darulite maybe a touch of this brighter red, just so I get some of this nice orange that I really like. Now, Indian yellow is fantastic for this, but see, I can pre-paint some of this area right in here and bring in some of that brighter color. Now, it's more pink, but there's a the pink right in here, but there's this glow, and I don't know if the photo can really show it there, but there is a really a magnificent glow and I'll cool it down here just a bit. Let's even add a little open medium because you can do this with open medium as well. The, and let's just add a bit of that to the outside here, okay? And so this is a glazing technique and you'll see me do this on some of the flowers and stuff, but I just really pump up that color here. Now, you know, in here is a softer pink. You can build that. You can, you know, bring back in a soft pink right on top of this if you want to get that pink and paint out that will start to paint out some of the glow here and so i'll come around with a soft pink now not so much that i cover up everything i've done before but i'm going to start softening some of this i want this 
be pink a little bit softer out through here. I'll put more light on it, but we'll put some of that right in there. Let's get just a touch cooler. I'm going to make it a little cooler than what I see right in there, just because I want a touch more contrast into this one. So I'm going to, you know, like I told you yesterday, I'm going to change some of the colors just a bit, but uh, I want to be able to uh, lighten a, a bit more than what I have. So I'm going to go into the soft pink. This is up around the value nine here, and I'm going to start restating some of this rose right here. And the good thing, one of the things that's that's really nice about doing it this way is that everything is dry. When, you know, yesterday, last night when I was painting on that, everything underneath was wet. So when you put that white on, and if you stroke that white a little bit too much, what it does is it reactivates that shadow underneath and darkens it down. And you don't always see that until your painting is a little more dry. So I didn't, you know, really catch a whole lot of that. And my painting dried down a little bit more than what I thought it was going to. So I'm going to bring it back up. That's all. I'm just going to bring it back up a little bit more here and add, and because I want this to be a really nice painting. Um, and I want to, uh, get out that boy that white's almost gone this white is almost gone <laughs> I'm gonna have to get some new tubes of paint out here this one is almost gone here we'll use get out the last little bit of some of this white here out of this one juice that white up a bit say goodbye to that tube and uh, we'll pick up a little more white here Let's in this petal, these petals that are back here were a little lighter here because they're hitting the light here. So I'll just drop that in. That one up here in front is a little darker. And I added this other one here. So, but I want it to be a touch lighter as well. And again, you can give the little ruffly edge if you want. Okay, that's up to you. I can just add a little soft pink right where those are going to come together there. Let's pick out a bit more light right up to here. So, but this will give you a good idea. I, I put a lot of texture into this one. I want to preserve that texture. I want that to come back in here. And we did a little bit of this turning down into the bowl there. So I'll bring that back and see, I just pick up that that tiny edge of texture there and that allows me to draw, if I want to, that extra front petal there. Um, little, little touches of light here to help this turn around. There is a kind of a strange kind of bent back petal here. And so see, I can... I can reshape and draw and stuff these petals. I don't want to do a ton of it because I like the the shape of this flower is a little different and I kind of like that. But I do want it to do, I did want to do a little bit more lightening on it. So a little lighter pink there on it overall. And uh, let's keep working down soft pink. If you get really light, you should get a bit warmer. So a soft pink comes in there, right in there. Let's, and see, I was doing more of a generalized shadow. Let's get a little blue, a little bit of violets, a little bit of some generalized shadow. In other words, an indirect, what I call an indirect light shadow. Uh, lighting here, rather than that real harsh light. So I was doing it more indirect. Let's warm that with a little red right there on that edge. A little red, a little yellow. So I like that as opposed to that harsh edge. That That's what I was talking about. Now, if you want, you can do that harsh edge. That's really easy to do. You can do it. You can roll this petal down. You can see how this one rolls down. So you just put some shadow right there to help it roll down. 
I'm gonna, I don't like to roll petals on my roses too much. You can, you just put shadow down and then light goes back up into the center area here. So I add a bit of light right down that center there. Sometimes I will, uh, to help that give that roll, it's the angle of your brush. So I'll pull back down this way and that makes this turn down, see, roll down. That's how you do it. But I don't always like to do it. So there's this edge rolls a bit so we can do a little bit there, but I'll probably just leave that. I kind of like that. And uh, draw in some more light here. There we go. And <clears throat> preserve some of those deeper red yellows, little violets, some of those deeper tones in there. That Dahlia Light is such a pretty color working in here. That's just such a pretty color. Boy, that's just almost perfect. A little darker red and then a little light. See, I'm just restating the color, just stating them again here. And you leave that. You want those modeling of those colors, right? That's what makes it pretty. It, it, you know, you don't blend them out, guys. Just make a mark of those colors. I'll come back here, make another mark of this yellow tone that I want in there. Maybe I want that yellow tone right up there. See, that'll soften it out. I'll take just a bit of that dark now and just soften through there. But I don't take it all out or, or anything. I'll leave some of that. And um, that's what really makes it pretty. And I want some of these textures here. So... Here we go. Let's uh, get some of this real light pink. It's almost like a value 10 pink. It's just almost white right down through there. And uh, I can leave that slightly cooler, darker little turned edge that you see here. That might be a bit dark. And so I'll push some of that right in there here there like that it's a bit dark for that other one but it's closer it's it's closer so I can just walk a touch of light into it we got to remember see if it, if you think ooh is that too dark you lighten it up because acrylics dry a little bit uh, darker right so we got to keep that in mind as you do this painting keep that in mind here so I'm working through just some soft pinks and I can work these colors and tones through and, and uh, you know, reset. Let's bring up this front one here a bit more. Here, maybe a bit of the cooler and yellow pink right there in the center, but, but more right up into the very front. Just, Kind of drag that around and again you can you know make them make the edges more ruffled or more smooth that's up to you i'm not going to get into that how you want to paint the tips of your rose or the petals i'm going to drop another little curvature like a little petals right in here just to get a touch more movement there nice light pink Right here. There you go. And you see, as I paint these, I try to not, you know, not create too many marks. In other words, not to go over them too many times. I want that light hit right back out here. I thought that was kind of neat. So that work that works kind of kind of nice. It. Uh, I don't. I don't normally like to paint these this much time because they start to get stiff. So that's a good reason to come back uh, with some various tones and like this, this light kind of drag it through here and that will uh, loosen up some of the work on those petals, you know, so I want a little pink through there. There we go. There, and this does 
have a tiny bit of light on the edge there like that it's good I'm gonna increase a little light there's a darker petal so I'll push a bit more light down and then a slightly pinker darker petal that comes out right through here because the dark petals depending on the angle of the light dark petals can sit up on top of light petals it happens all the time depends on their angle to the light and that's what you put in okay so let's just add a little more pink so you can see it comes through and I've lightened it quite a bit I may come through again one more time. Sometimes, you know, I, with this is I will just recoat the whole thing and work the petals and the shapes back in. If I feel that the rose starts to get a little too stiff, I will do that. So that's something that you can look at as well. Let's drop that other little shadow right in there of that one. Drop in some of that light. I do like to do these progressions of marks and colors because it just gives such beautiful shape to your flowers. But the other thing that you see, this is the one thing like you can look at the, the, the edges are not like super crispy clear, like right in here. And that's because of the weave of the canvas. And so, so many of you ask, why do you paint on board as opposed to the, you know, to the canvas? And that's one of the reasons why, right there, because of the weave of the canvas hinders me sometimes from getting the, the detailed edge to a petal that I really like. But we'll do it this time. So, because there's a lot of people that like the canvases. So this one, so this is, you can see this one has gotten a little bit overall lighter. Could... Like if you look at that petal right into there, it could get a softer, lighter pink. Just one more time here. And uh, it's surprisingly, it's like a portrait, you know, that when I started painting portraits, that really helped me with my roses. And you've heard me say that several times because the portrait tones are so light and such small variations that painting those facial portrait tones and asking yourself to get slow variations in it was really very helpful. Very, very helpful. But, uh, so we'll push that in. Let's push just a little more, maybe a softer pink down in there. A uh, little bit more of a softer pink right down into some of that so see you can shadow back soften it out and then place the edges like there's the edge of a little petal right here place those edges in that center that movement right back into it again you know that's that's up to you so here we'll but you can work it again and again that's the main point that I want to get through to you here. You can work this several times again and again. Okay, so you see, and this is what, and it doesn't bother you when you start to step back, but up close, like right on this edge here, it's not like super smooth like it is on the actual rose, and that's because of the weave of the canvas right there grabbing it. So I have to either put on more gesso, or not gesso, but the, the uh, uh, canvas prep medium or I have to work the rose a couple more times to smooth it out if that makes sense so I build more paint but either way I've got to build stuff in there so that the uh, the, the weave gets filled up a bit that's the main part the weave has to get filled up a bit in there good let's put a little bit of that shadow right out there a little cooler nice little tone cooler red and then we'll come in and work some of the others so maybe just a bit more here there we go 
or I didn't like that, just to, and re remind that, you know, that the angle at which you, you make those marks are really important, guys. Bring those angles in like this as to bring that angle in. And, and uh, I added this extra one up on top of that one. So this is not on the photo, just a bit. So I want to keep that shadow, but a bit more of that other color. They're soft. There. There we go. Just little bits. Now, let's come back. Maybe a, the softer pink right up here into the front. I don't really need to restate this one too much. So I'll put a softer pink right up. Just a softer pink and light in some of this. Right in there. Let's get that other thicker light right here. A little more volume to my color. I'm mostly interested in that real big one there because it sets it. But this one can have a bit more. After I lighten that up, I really like that. And I want to get that right up here onto this one a little bit more. Maybe even pulling in here so that pedal turns there a little bit more a little bit more pink right around that's that bowl this is the bowl shadow right there so we remember what I always say we have to preserve that and that creates the roundness of your flower even though I'm lightening that up quite a bit and I've almost lost that deeper shadow and the other thing you could do, it's kind of like, it's almost like what I'm doing in here now, is I'm getting lost into too much detail when I shouldn't be. But I am. <laughs> you know, we do, we get lost in it. I do too. You know, so I'm getting kind of lost in too much detail without moving forward. I should be looking at the values, the lightness of it, and get out, because I can adjust the rest of the painting later on, if that makes sense. To you see so yeah that that one so I'm missing that bigger shadow right in here that that pulling line shadow that's right here that that really kind of helps that pedal so I did you just draw it back in that's all you do draw it back in and as I get to the final bit of this painting and I start to really look at the details those are things that I will, you know, look at. I don't pay too much attention to it right now, but that that helps a lot. But yeah, and if I did that detail or if I did that shadow back up here on this side, something like that shadow right up over here. Let's keep it right in there and right down in there. Okay, that will help this other structure of this other petal here as well and keep the contrast right in there like I want to keep it as well. That's a <clears throat> bit dark, but don't worry, I'll fix that. I just want to get a little more color into it and then we'll fix this edge. Here, we'll let that go right into that shadow and then I'll pick up some extra paint here Use this to draw that one in, right there. Soften this edge out. See, but see, you can repaint a lot of this, keeping it smaller. You can repaint a lot of it. Now let's go put that indirect shadow back in there. Right in there. There, that's good. And that other in it lines up with that lower indirect shadow. I can get some lighter pink in there. That'll work nice. Let's just clean up this edge just a bit. Let those shadows stay soft right there. And that's kind of pretty. They keep the softer shadow to it. You know, there's a lot of artists though that love to do the more direct light, like I say, the more direct shadows. And if you want, you can. I like the indirect shadows more than anything else in everything I do. Softer shadows, so not a lot of not a lot of edge detail to them. I like the softer shadows, so that's kind of pretty. So it brings up the the lightness, the fullness of that rose a bit more. 
And uh, I'd like to uh, add just a few more little things here before I move on, because it is light. So I add that little edge of that light. Let's add this little edge of that light. Pull out a bit. Edge of that light. Now, we were working down here, which I really liked. I'm going to take a softer little pink and just bring that up a bit. Walk that around here. So that's overall, that one's not too bad. It could have a little more shadow pink in here. Now, it is warmer out here today, so this is drying. So I'll put just a bit more extender on that right there. Let's push in. Just a little bit more of this Darulide and red. Maybe just a real light pink. Just a bit of it right in there. Some of that right in there. I love that little glowy color. And uh, maybe a little more pure Darulide right up over here. A little brighter. Just boom, there it is. Glow. I love that glow. Let's add a bit up here. Even though I don't see it on that flower, I want it. So... We'll add just a bit right in there. And um, then we'll go to a softer pink here. Here. There we go. And then we'll build more of the light through here. There's a train that is very loud. I don't know if you can hear that. And a bit of it over here. So you can see, you can soften and build. That's what I really love. There's a real dark, cooler shadow that really lifts the inside bowl here. So I'll push that in there. I like that bit of contrast in there like that. And you can make sure you stated that in here as well, because it is right in here. Right in that area. Nice dark. Let's even touch a little bit of that red violet. Some of that red. Red violet and red. Really dark, look at that. See, that's, that's your ultimate kind of contrast and the other thing about putting in a even spot darks like that they tend to uh make the other the other uh lights look lighter that's simultaneous contrast does that make sense so yeah they work pretty nice let's just push a little bit of that around yeah just a just a touch or two of it just a nice little clarity to the depth of the shadows right in there like that so as you see it's you know I have an idea but a lot of what I'm doing here is refining it so it's you know I always find that it's good for you to I used to always get the most out of when I was watch a master paint is just watch their thought process through does that make sense what are you changing? What are you seeing? And then I would always, as I watched them, try to see, ooh, are you going to, you know, do I see what you're seeing? Or are you going to change that, you know, particular thing? Or do something a little different, you know? And do I see what it is that you're seeing? Or how do I see it? And so I'm just going to add a bit of those sparks. Remember we talk about that stuff? To... Set that in. There we go. That looks pretty nice. Let's add that softer pink out here to soften that exchange. Even a little open medium. If you want it to stroke really nice. A little open medium. So I'll come out here, soften that. Then I'll pick up some more white. I walk up the scale as I'm adding these colors. I don't go directly to white because then it causes me to have to take too many marks and that's very important. I have to take too many marks to try to uh, soften out the exchange. Does that make sense? So I don't go to a, a white. I, I walk up the scale, slowly making it lighter. Let's add a little more pink. Oop. And softer light right out here. Just a bit of it. Right out to that edge. 
And you see, all of this is going to change as I start to uh, add the real darks around the composition as well. So when we start to really get that container and stuff going there, everything is going to change. So now, I, you know, this one has it developed up into all different kinds of uh, smaller petals and stuff, which I didn't want to add. I wanted to keep it very simplistic here, but you can add a few more in there if you want. Prepare it with a shadow. I'm going to keep it really kind of simplistic and make this look like the bowl. I might, you know, I like to change. I like to paint roses the way I feel, and I feel like maybe another little cut petal right across right there might uh, do a lot for the rose. So I'll add that. You don't see that in the photo. And if you disagree with me, don't tell me, <laughs> okay? And uh, I'll bring this light, because this is the light side. I'll bring that light up a little bit more. And I like that one. I like this center slightly darker. I like this a little bit cooler going back there. We can cool that just a touch more. Remember that little bit of the green gives you that gray here. We can gray that just a bit. Put some of that gray color in here. Yeah, see that gray, that cooler gray. It's really pretty. In the, that's a little dark for that one. See, it worked in that one. A little dark up here on this one, same color, because this one is so much lighter, and that'll show you just how much lighter we have this one now. And because I can't go back and forth with the same colors anymore. There. So that gets that. I like that one. I think that's a real pretty one. And that one, I like the color, that, especially that little bit of dark in there. And I might just sneak in another little mark of it right in there. Maybe a, a bit of it here and there. If I feel the center gets a little bit too mushy, that's when I'll go back because I love to draw with the darks. I'll go back and just open it up a bit. Okay, so with that, that's a pretty good thing there. This could have a little bit more of that gray. Let's just green this up a bit, gray it up a bit, right down in here. So it's a little lighter, but it's a little lighter gray. That still allows that to be the shadow in there. I want to get on the photo, you can see it almost glow in there. So I want to make sure I get a bit of a glow. And then let's soften out the... Now see, there's a harsh line shadow, cast shadow, that comes out here like this. I'm not going to paint the harsh line of it. I'll paint a general softening shadow. That's the kind of shadow I like, not the harsh line, which I, th I feel takes away from the rose. And I don't like them. But if you like them, you just go for it. You can. Okay. There we go. That's kind of pretty right in there. Oh, okay, let's move on. Let's keep moving now because I'm slowing down just a bit. Let me step back the camera just a bit here. Okay, now let's go right down into here. Let's take our bigger three-quarter inch brush. And the, the one thing that I've worked on here that I can work on quite a bit more is paint. That's the, the you know, it's getting paint onto the surface. And paint gives interest to the painting. And so here, yeah, I got the color on and stuff, but it's there's not enough paint to really do anything there. So let's get some of this color down. Let's come right over here. Let's grab some of our two reds. Let's just mix some of this up because I got to get paint. And I might end up repainting some more on these roses as we get into the painting so I can do more with it. Now, I want this, I want part of this to be slightly more toned. So I'm going to take some of this down over here with some green. And then we'll add some white to this here. We'll tone that down a little bit more green. So it's a softer, softer, softer um, grade green. But I want to be able to really gray it. So, you know, maybe even take some of, uh, make some various grade colors here. See, so there's another nice 
grayed color right here some brighter color let's get some darker color some i like the in the roses some of those yellows reds red violets quinacridones don't mix them up real well model them up but let's just grab some of this and let's get some paint on here and since i've kind of lost my drawing i'll just paint them but you could you could come back in here and put your drawing back on okay so i want to get some paint paint causes it to advance you don't it's not thin does that make sense and sometimes with acrylic painters we paint too thin so let's get this let's get a little bit of that green in there tone that down let's work our center you paint roses with me all the time we work the center like that right so let's work that center right and uh let's even put a a bit of the red and the darya light whoops that's the hansa the darya light over here we can put a bit of a glow i don't want it to glow quite as much as that other side over there right quite as much now these roses here so these are nice round point roses here rounded petals these are a little more pointed and so and, and that doesn't mean that you can't do both i mean heck you can but i want to round these just a bit more so i'm just going to use my big brush and start to set the petals not paint the petals specifically yet but just set the petals in here and set the motion of the petals in here in other words so we have the the feeling of movement here to this rose in and out here a bit of the roundness that we're going to have so the bowl is going to sit right in here right that's going to be the bowl of the rose yeah that works and we could have a bit more shadow the reddish shadow color right down in here as this is going to come right down in here set up the light and shadow this will shadow down just a bit over here let's go ahead and add some of this right in here on this one as well get some paint let's add a little extender grade it up a bit get some paint on here start to fill in that canvas weave so we get some paint which gets body to what it is that we're painting and brings it forward it's one of the most important things to remember and it's one of the reasons why i don't care all the time to to paint on canvas because i can't it takes so much more paint to build up on a canvas than it does on a board because the board is smoother does that make sense and so I, I like the speed at which I can build up paint on a board. That's why you see me paint on boards all the time. Because I build up the paint. That looks pretty good. Here. Let's, uh, we have this real dark one back there. Let's get a little more green. A little darker. Here. So a little, I add a little green to some of my colors that grays it down. That uh, works pretty nice. Graze that down. Even the violets, a little darker. The violets, a little red, a little green. That grays your shadow down here a little, some more. Now I got to get some darker colors into this background, so these roses recede back there. I'll pull out and sm and just smoosh their backgrounds. That's a good color there too. I can use that right down in here. To push, see how it pushes the roundness, the light into, as I make these edges softer into that shadow. That's what I've got to do. And so I'll paint those kind of back and forth. You know, back in his composition, he had a red one, even one more red one, darker pushed back right back here. So I just might push that color in. It'll help send that other one forward. Let's add just a bit of red to this. We'll add uh, the idea, just turn the brush around, add the idea of the center onto that one. It's the center that really makes the roses. And I've said that to you so many times as we're painting. 
it's the center that makes the roses really is so we're going to have another rose right out over here smaller little juvenile one that's right there and another one right in here we might it might be too many we might because i don't like the two and the two here so that might be too many he breaks this up with some in here with some leaves but that might be too many so what about let's change this again i am always changing <laughs> you know sorry if you've base coated along with me uh, we're i'm going to change this down small this one down make a descending see i'm looking for a descending in size down here so let's move this rose here right and we have some burnt sienna some blue here let's just take this out here love to do this kind of stuff see and and then see this is the kind of stuff that is gonna you know i um, when I do stuff like this, I get a, a lot of crossing of the colors, and that's what makes your design so casual, so free. Um, let's bring this petal back in. We'll do some negative painting. See how negative painting can really work a, an edge? And we'll, we'll open this and push this one back just a little bit. Open up that. We'll let this one, let's blur that a bit. <clears throat> okay. And... Uh, yeah, that'll work. And instead of doing the one, we'll do two here. So we'll push that back, push that edge back, push this, and blur the colors. Remember that, we, you know, we were painting the, was showing you the soft, the soft choker of the, of him, which I looked at him this morning and went, oh, you know, I need to lighten that antler. So I'll probably do that. Um, but we do that real soft uh, stroke in there um, and the flowing of the colors, you know, like Oppenheim did. You know, I talked to you about Oppenheim and, you know, and, and I never even heard of him until I was watching, you know, or started studying John Howard Sandin. But how he flowed his colors from one area to the other so much different than like illustration and stuff so see what i'm doing is i'm flowing the colors here which is gonna i'm gonna push this back by flowing this towards the background here and everything's wet right in here so you know i'll flow this in and i'm gonna push that shadow in there let's push this greenish shadow right in here out just a bit and into that rose a touch so that those colors flow together and that rose will sink back in on that side if that makes sense and I do that the thing is when you're gonna flow together like that and you do that the thing is that you use and the rule guys is and I know it's sometimes hard but the rule is you use as large a brush as possible that gives you a better flow to the area and more than anything else it gives you and this is really important okay more than anything else, it uh, allows you to state those areas with fewer strokes. And if you can state it with fewer strokes, it won't be as stiff. Because remember how many times I start to paint that and it starts to get stiff, right? So these right now are really casual because they're painted with a big brush, really soft. Now what I'm going to do is come in here and pick out areas. I'm not going to copy this one at all because there's too much going on compared to these others. So I'm going to soften him out. I'm going to paint a version of my roses here, softening him out. I want to get some of this lighter pink, but not completely light, that is up that's going to help me develop a bowl, right? So I'll do that. And uh, let's put some of this edge right in here. So I want to build... This petal I want to be soft, but maybe I'm going to build a petal right here that is going to come in towards that bowl right there, okay? And I'm watching everything else I got going on. That's the ticket. I can maybe give a little bit more light right here because that's the light side. As I run out of paint, I can head to these outer petals as I run out of paint, letting the paint softly run out of my brush here 
and just give indications of other petals. I don't want to paint a perfect rose out here because I'm out of my center of interest. Does that make sense? I'm out of my center of interest, so I want this rose now to start diminishing down in power here. Here we go. Maybe a little bit. Let's just swirl a little bit of our reds and pinks right in here and give a bit of movement right there, right? And I'll use some light and the tip in the corner here to give suggestions of petals here moving around. But I'm not going to, let's give a little more dark so I can reset the darks anytime. So I can reset a bowl right in there here and reset that and uh, put in a little brighter red if you want to see a, a spot you know maybe a, a little bit of a spot so we carry some of that look of those other colors but everything is going to be softer so I'm building that building that this way like that and around here, maybe soft, not quite as light as that other one there, but a little bit here to say that those petals are coming up underneath. I want these other roses, my main roses are there. I'll put some detail in here, but I want it to start fading away. Does that make sense? That's the goal. Let's go down here to the lighter gray, to the gray. We'll add some light to it. And we'll use this other gray. That's a little too light. So a little more gray here. That's better. Now I may end up coming back and lightening up like that a bit more. But not yet. Let's uh, give the idea. Maybe this petal sit up. One of its petals sit up on top of this one. Push back like that. See? So... I can uh, build that up. Now, if you want, you know, more power, more power to the composition will become by carrying your light further through the composition. How much am I going to do? I don't know yet. So right now, what I want to do is make sure that I'm keeping that as the center of interest and then I'm painting down through the painting. So let's just, let's leave that like that for right now, for this second, and then we'll come back here and we'll add a little more lighter pink here, okay? And a little more white. And I might have to let everything dry like I did on the other ones and then determine do I need it to do it again, again, a little bit more. So maybe that edge here, right like that. I think these roses could. He has a lot of light, you know, traveling on his up there. So, I mean, we could push in. So I look at this, it's like, you know, so when I put a mark on like that, what I'm looking at is the contrast of the mark to here. Do I feel like that rose can support that in the direction of this other one? And it really can't. I will test it with other marks coming in on other... You know, maybe I need to, if I like that mark, maybe I need to increase the marks on the other rows. Does that make sense? And then that starts to soften this one out. Or I just come close like this, and I, I will need to probably let this dry up a bit. See how everything blends really quickly? Because everything is so wet. So it blends really quickly. So, and I don't always like that, so I'm going to maybe let some of this dry and come back and work this rose again. But you see, I like these little stab, I call it little stab art stuff, little bits of it coming around. S casual little petals, little ideas of them. Circle up this rose, a little gray, a little pink and gray. Circle up the center here a bit, a bit more here. 
and some dark right into that center. There we go. Maybe a bit onto this side of that bowl. Kind of a pretty little thing, but you can take a little light pink and close up some of it here get the shapes you can lighten it up a bit here a little more pink into that pink more of this brighter pink right off this side as you come towards the center line of the rose and then let the grays take over which causes it to recede back is for our background, right? There. And let's put a little more pink right in here. Build that up. It's, I'm building paint. You know, building paint. So I'm watching here. We'll just pull that in. Boom. Like that. That's kind of pretty. I like that casual structure of that quicker thing and see I lose some of that right in here so I can just come back and just add some of that brushwork that calligraphy and that brings more interest to the other ones too so if I start to like the calligraphy and something like this that just means I need to step through my painting here and add some of that calligraphy to my big rows here and that will get me back to where I really like it. Here. There we go. Get that back in there. All right. So that's a soft little one there. Let's get this little soft little edge. Hits the light a little bit. A little turning. Let's get this little softer pink here, a little more light here. And then we let this immediately go because we don't know exactly where our shadow, how far our shadow is going to go down here. So we'll put a bit of the red, swirl around a bit of the lighter pink here. So see, you can do this. I can paint more positive here. Putting in the front of the light pink, the front of this rose right here, because it is hitting that light up there quite a bit. And then I can just take some of my red, red violet, some of those reds, and paint into that with the shadow, opening up the rose and giving some of that shadow movement and stuff that you'd like to see. A little more gray right back here but keep this very soft bit of it right there maybe a touch more light right down in here touch more light some other soft petals So, like I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm painting um, more of the, f the form, the feel of the petals here, uh, painting in, as, especially as I come back here. I want just the movement. I don't want the petals, because petals start to get too much interest, if that makes sense, right? Petals start too much interest. Let's take some red violet. Red, some quinacridone, some of these real dark, cooler colors, and push in the back, cooler part of that rose. Let's push some right back in here. So we push that one further back. And as we get to these out here, see, they're just more of a, a softness, a blurry softness of the rose. We don't need a whole lot of shape or form and so I always you know in some of the other paintings you're always going to hear me say these are the ghosts the ghost roses here right and so I'll push this around here a little ghost 
here and we'll some light but just casual little bits just the shape the main shapes of them here like that and if I build if I build this pedal up on this one it'll come forward if I build this other one right in here if I decide to build some more light like right in here it'll shove that one back do you see the difference there okay so by where you decide to put the edge like this edge will bring that further forward so you know maybe I want to build this pedal in this run of roses here maybe I want this to be a, a softer one but we could also Let's look at it this way. I mean, his is very, very gray, and I do like that. We could also gray this rose out some more. In other words, make it almost more of a light or white. Let's try that. So what we'll do is let's just blur this pink back in there. We'll take some of the extra paint off. And this is good. This is, not, this is good experimentation. So we get this gray, this green gray. So we'll turn this a little bit lighter, not quite as much pink. Maybe some uh, yellow oxide in there. So we'll push a bit of the yellow. See, one of the things I did not add to these other guys, which I could, is a little bit of that yellow Darulite, light, just a touch of it right in there, which will give me a better harmony in my colors harmony your harmony comes from you know using common colors even though you may tone it down a little bit more and stuff but it's using common colors and stuff so and you notice also the other thing here you're watching me paint very fast aren't i aren't i painting a lot faster than what i did in the other stuff and that's because i'm in an unimportant area and I want this to be really casual, and this area is not important. And so I paint with a certain degree of speed because that's what gives me a more casual feel to this particular part of the painting. That's why I do it. So let's add a bit more light, a bit more of this gray, a bit more green to this gray. And it's kind of pretty, just kind of grayed out there. Let's add a bit more gray here. This would be the shadow here of this particular rose. Comes in here as a shadow and it just goes way soft back there. That's kind of pretty. And yeah, just uh, let's just kind of will let some of this light. Now see, this light will be light, but as long as we don't give it too much intensity, we'll be okay. Okay, we won't give it too much intensity. We'll be okay. So, but let's just pull this light down. Simple shape. Now, what is it that, what is it that makes the center of a rose? Let's go with some green, some red, violet. Some nice little gray. What is it that makes the rose? It's the center. I gave you the answer in the question. There goes a loud car. And we'll just add some of this gray here. And that rose just kind of softly sits there. I like that. And if we take some of our blue, our burnt sienna, bit of extender here, and we negative paint out around here, which will cause that to lighten up a little bit more, blur that into that. That might look okay, just real soft out like that. You know, maybe, and sometimes I'll, I'll do kind of like what he does here, leaving that more direct dark here just a boom more direct a little see and that intensity though starts to bring it forward so 
watch how bright you make these extra little marks there because you're bringing that forward here you know so got to be a little careful but it's just a soft it's basically the center of the rose the idea of the bowl of the rose and maybe a petal and that's you know that's it's it's an impression of it right just an impression of it we'll just maybe push a little bit here just the idea of that that's not so bad let's uh take a little bit of the cooler so that just gives that one a little more defined center a little bit on here and uh maybe i take that blue burnt sienna some of that red darker color and uh paint back a little red a little bit of that brown matter it's such a pretty color right back in here soften some of this reduce the size of this one just a bit turning it more so a bud when we'll let these colors work together back there yeah and of course we'll break this up with some leaves and stuff we'll do that and we'll come in here even with our container we'll push a little bit of shadow here up onto that one this will help your separation so i can come back and even with some of my container color and stuff that i'm going to have here i can push in we're going to have a little cast shadow there but push that blurred out blur pull and push and pull and blur some of that out those edges out as it drops down that side and then we'll put some leaves and stuff right up in there but some of this really nice um you know negative painting right up along and through here which brings that you know that interest of that those guys right up right up in front see that negative painting allows you to get that little, just that smoother little edge and that is really what brings something forward if i just lightly take that shadow right in there like that and paint that edge a little more carefully see that brings that edge of that rose right up there i'm you know and this is why i talk about the canvas like see that one fuzzes just a little bit and if i come in here real careful just, and light and a little bit liquid on the paint it'll fill in the, the weave just a bit and it takes a more direct edge which comes forward do you see that that's why in uh, in so you know you see me use a lot of boards a lot of boards i'm just going to blur that just a bit but you see me use a lot of boards and that's because i can get that edge really quickly with a board where i have to fight the weave a touch on the uh you know when i paint the floral and i have to fight that weave just a bit i can do it i just have to fight it a bit and that's okay you know so here we'll have that and that's kind of that's kind of pretty his light i mean he really puts a lot of light right out into the front of this one so let's let's just i mean his light hits right up here on the front of that one and right up there so let's just leave that for a second that amount of light that's a lot of light but we could increase just a touch more on some of ours to say that that light is okay you know by putting some more additional light more opaque heavier color right up there onto a few of those so that the viewer sees this front one here is more light and we get that nice light strike right there you know maybe this i push that into shadow i think i'm gonna keep that down there into shadow a little bit of shadow so i brought it up forward a bit but maybe i'll shove it back into shadow more with that one right in there yeah 
and then I could bring in there's a touch more light so I I'm not following <laughs> yeah probably driving a few of you crazy but this is how I do it this is uh, I'm not following exactly what he's doing is I'm now looking at how my light is touching I like that so which means I have to go back through my painting and increase the light in a few others that are closer or more extreme to the light does that make sense so I can keep that and then I'll let it all dry down and see where we are but that you know that's what we work on so we'll push that light right in there push that light right where we need it to be here there we go and maybe a bit more on the edge here here yeah so and I'm going to use these techniques this kind of stuff um, all the way through the rest of the flowers you know balancing their light and stuff so you can see you can see the light diminishing down does that make sense and I can assist if I if I really want to make the viewer see where the light is like just bringing up just one or two little petals right here will let the viewer see that light a little bit better does that make sense so I give it the light direction does that make sense I'm through there like that so um, bringing right up here at the top here a bit more of the light hitting right up here and so it gives more of the light let's put a another little angled petal right in here I like those there like that and you know when you get to these softer ones out here you just need little marks little edges you don't need perfect little stuff little marks little edges I kind of like that one I don't want to round it up too much more I don't want a big round one but I'm just going to take some gray and just kind of push this right around like that we'll leave that that's kind of pretty out through there like that I'd like to have a touch more dark and it's mine if I want to have it I can have it <laughs> right <laughs> Some of you are saying, well, it's yours, Dave. You can go do it if you want. I do. I want to put a little more red right in there. Bring that up. Bring that. Bring that right up. And uh, yeah, that worked pretty nice. A little more red right in there. Maybe a touch of that Dari light. Bring that right in here. Let that. Yep that did that look at how look see how that color travels maybe just take lift some more of that right in there just a bit you see it diminishing down is that right and let's just take that soft and push that right in there there we go right in there like that and a softer little pink to round up this edge of the bowl maybe here maybe a touch more light like this is a light little petal coming in on this side right over there that's kind of neat close up this side of the bowl another little petal coming right back there so it just kind of closes up that rose a bit and that's kind of pretty all through there yeah now so I like that. I like that variation. Ooh, we could have some of that Darulite orange kind of color right in there. Where was I? <laughs> I lose my space quite a few times. But uh, let's just make it a little bit right in here. More Darulite. We could have a touch of that right in there. Not too light. Just a little touch to say we did it. Just a whisper of it. That's kind of pretty. So, or, you know, throughout through here, I'll do some of that stuff. Let's go back in and set some more of the light on this side. So let me step the camera back a little bit um, here. Let me go back just a bit. That's 
probably a little too much, but that'll work. But I want to push that right back in here. Does that make sense? I want to work my, my darks back in there. So we'll go do that. We'll take some extender here in my big brush. And let's just put the extender. And again, this isn't really for me to blend or anything. What this is, is for me to slide over the surface a bit more, right? So we're going to slide over the surface a bit more here. So I'll use this to help set my darks. And the other thing I want to get, so now I've got this feeling that I've got enough paint right in here, but I don't have enough in here. And I want this warmer and lighter and uh, some more stuff going on here. I'm going to push some of these reds. This is all good color. Don't get rid of it. Let's uh, use some burnt sienna, some blue, some green. All of this makes beautiful browns that can go into your compositions. So you can just lay some of that into your composition. Now, if it's a little too red, that isn't really too bad. You can just add a little more green and a touch of blue to it. But uh, I will sometimes take these colors like this and just lay that in. See, look at how great that looks. Let that just kind of model and fade in there like that. That just looks so great. Um, and so you can, you know, model like that. You've seen me do this and, and pull. I can pull and leave some of the direction like you see me do in contemporary paintings all the time, right? I do that all the time in contemporary paintings. But um, let's come back and let's add a little bit warmer and a little bit of yellow, a little bit of burnt sienna here warmer color a little bit of our reds warmer yeah let's get back not exactly the same but closer to what we used over here this was that through light that was going to be in here remember that okay let's get back up over now when you're finding colors like this you the thing is i like to you know it's like that's too light we all know it's too light please tell me you see that's too light right but i'm going to paint into it and move it around and adjust it. I know I don't take it out. I adjust it for what I need, where I want it. And I'm going to start working that color out into and into my my roses here, into these receding edges that I want to have, the softness that I want to have. And I'm building more paint at the same time. This is my my ground, right? So I'll push my ground in there. And I'm going to have that shadow in there. And I like to move the color through. This is the, this is the through light, a bit of the through light coming through on this, on this side, bouncing back through. Now I'll take some of my burnt sienna, excuse me, my red. I, I love this red and the blue. It's really a dark, the brown matter and the blue. It's kind of a purplish dark that will make some of the form, the casting form shadow here that I'll work down through. And uh, this is what I like. See, I hit those strokes and some of it, uh, you know, color carries a bit. And I like that. Now, that's, and this is what I say about a, a smaller brush can get you into a little bit of trouble um, because it's, you know, it puts on a lot of little marks and they're not soft. This puts on some marks and it's softer, see? And I like that. So we'll, uh, so I can use the smaller brush though. This red, whoops, wrong red. Let's go brown matter and a little blue. It's a nice purpley dark here. And let's use that right over here. So we're going to have through light up here, but back here we can get some more darks. And see, this brown matter works really, really nice because it's some of the darker reds that we used also in the other painting. And you're picking up just a, a bit of it. And the blue, which is what we'll use here onto uh, our, uh, our container, will, will work as well. Really nice. See, I'm just working on applying and putting on some paint here. See, 
getting that paint in there. That paint is what gives you the interest. And we'll work this through a couple times. I don't want to blend it too much. I want to leave some of these streaks of color. I like that. And they would, the, the masters would. You know, let's um, take a bit of this warm, push that out. I mean, you would leave just marks of color. They would, you know, and uh, dance it around a little bit in here. And then you can soften some of it out, but leave some of those marks so it's, it's not so perfect. What I love the most, though, is my knife so I can come back in here and just break my knife and this always this is a little bit of the color that will be appearing into our silver container here and so I'll add some of it into some of this area here so you pick up some of the colors, some of those tones. Does that make sense? But look how, look at the depth of the color I have in there now. And I love that. And I love just to, you know, you, you create this, this, uh, and you can hear me scraping the canvas there, you know, but you create that color, that tone. And then we'll go up here to the top and I'll keep working it and I'll work the, uh, Let's work a little more extender, some of my dirty brush there. As I come up here, I'm gonna work this a little bit more and we'll go into some of that light. And again, I like to, and this is a good time for me to kind of clean up my palette a little bit. My palette and my colors are kind of running everywhere. But I'll take some burnt sienna, some green that I like, that warmer burnt sienna and green. I want that burnt sienna because it's going to be, you know, the, 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 the uh, when we paint this silver vase here, it's mostly going to be a bluish and we have thing. And so the burnt sienna is kind of the complement of it. And that's what I said at the very beginning, I'm going to want to push it forward and I'm going to push it forward with the warmer siennas which are going to be almost compliments to what's going on, see? So, and, you know, um, the Franz Mornaments, I mean, would just, would just drag some of this stuff down and create some of these lines, these movements here, and create this interest this way. Isn't that interesting? Boom, that movement there, like that. Look at how that creates that form and stuff in that painting. But it takes a lot of paint, so I'm going to scrape on a lot of paint here. Push this into that one there, you know. And you just got to kind of remember, okay, this is burnt sienna. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow up there. Burnt sienna and green, a little heavy on the green, right? And we'll create some lighter areas, move that through. Some, even some lighter areas yet. Move that. And then take your big brush and pull through just a bit and uh, create some additional softer movement through. But I love that knife. And that's how he would do it. And so it really is a great technique. Let's take a bit of that burnt sienna right into some of this brown matter and blue and push some of that right in there. See, that's where the real pretty colors and see, that's what you're looking for is some of this just pretty colors, you know, through, and so we'll have a rose there. So we'll push a little bit of the dark up and through here. I love the knife, especially when I want to create interest like this into my backgrounds. The knife just makes it work. It's just so nice. Let's put a bit of that warmth right in there. Here. Boom. Some of that color. So you got that cools and the warmth. And once that's dry, you can come back in and reestablish some of your form shadow in there as well. You know, that really works. But uh, let's maybe take a bit of that light 
right up here next to that. That works. And see, it just gives that nice clean edge and I can use that burnt sienna and some of the green right here. Really pretty color. We have that rose that's gonna be there. But see, I love this. So I'll just grab some of that. It's modeled on my knife here. And pull that down, tap that around and through, and leave some of that color variation that adds a lot of the interest. Some of you always, you know, are writing me and asking, you know, get some of these interests and stuff. Well, this is really how I like to do it a lot here in in contemporary looks. So there's no reason why we can't take this Victorian rose painting and turn it in a little more contemporary. Look at that warm, some of that green and that warmth that's coming through up there. That's really nice. It looks kind of like you know what you're doing, right? And uh, let's take a bit of that, just a bit of that right down in here and put a spark, what I call the spark of that color right down there like that. So you'll pick it up traveling through some of this composition here. And that works really nice. Let's take that warmer burnt sienna, some of that green, right in here. That's that warm, playing the warm and the cool there. Here. And this is where I work it. So, you know, I'll work through some of those different colors. That's really pretty let's put a bit of warmth right out here right coming out of that shadow side of that one right there that that works that works all the way through it so yeah and we'll add some of that back in here of course this is going to head to the the uh, compositional shadow side of it so we'll be a little careful because it's got to go cooler over there, but we can get some warm notes. We can add some warmer notes in there. Maybe a little bit of the warm note in there. Yeah. That's what I want. See, that burnt sienna is going to play great against this. And we'll start adding some of those burnt sienna tones right into that one. Let's take this one off just a bit. So you can see the real difference here as I'm working that. And of course, then over here, so this is going to be the through light over here on this side. Let's put some extender over here and my dirty brush. It's okay. So I'll paint these. I'll paint these roses exactly the same as I did these guys over here. And uh, yeah, and then uh, we'll we'll show you a few clips of that along the way. I don't think we need to take a ton of time doing that. Let's get our blue, this time violet, blue and violet and a little bit of that red. More blue, sometimes a little green helps you neutralize if you get too red stuff. And we'll work some of our shadows in here a little deeper. We got to work some of these compositional shadows over there too, but so in other words, this shadow has to come in here a little bit more. But we'll use this more like a, a like a cast shadow instead of a, a a form shadow. So it's a cast shadow. That's what we'll do here. Boom, 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 boom. And just soften that out. See, don't get rid of all that brushwork there. Just soften it out a bit here and blur it out just a bit. And it gives the interest, leaves the interest, let's say that. So we'll push this back out. That's that coming, that shadow. And it's going to lay over our our lace there just a bit and come right out there like that. Okay. That's going to be good. We'll even take some of this color 
because we want that right up in our metal. And the deeper, the cooler some of your shadows are on your metal, the more the metal will shine. So we'll need some of these really deep, cool colors with that violet. The violet is the coolest of all the colors, that red violet, the coolest of the colors we have in a painting. So it's going to be very important. Okay, so that's good. Now, let's uh, take some of this. We'll warm and add some sienna's to it. We'll put a little bit more color into this. More color, more, more color onto the canvas. That's what we're looking for. Mainly why we're doing this is get that blue and that red. That's just so pretty here, especially coming out of that deep shadow here. It's just a nice way out of that deep shadow. Nice color. And it's just going to, that's all going to play really nice. Now, see, his is bluer, quite a bit bluer. And I want to leave it a little no warmer. And I want to be able to even add a few of these warm notes over here into some of that so that you pick up the cool and the warm. And this is a complement of this. So we'll have some of this color into here. But it, it'll see already it's like pushing this vase forward. That's what I'm looking for. This push pull of this vase. So we'll just push some of this in. There we go. And yeah, that really pops. Boom. See how that just, man, it just looks like you know what you're doing. Let's take some of this warm, some of this onto my big brush this time. We did it that cooler little green. I don't want to lose it all. So I'm lightly brushing this over that. Don't lose what you did before. Scumble brush it up over that a bit. But as you, you know, the, the one thing about painting stuff like this, guys, is as you start to develop and as you start to put on more color, your entire plan uh, might shift, <laughs> you know, as you start to see more color on it and stuff. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's okay. Let it shift. So let's push this back a bit. Yeah, that looks good. We'll send that back. We'll let that light come through there. We'll, we'll pick up some of this. Now that was the burnt sienna. I've got a little grungy right there. Burnt sienna and green, right? A little bit of white. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use up a lot of my colors here so I can reset my palette as I start to paint some more here. Let's get some of this burnt sienna in here, right? Let's take some of that color, that warmth and stuff right up here. Let's also add a few notes of it right up over in here. So you're picking up some of that color crossing through over here, right? This is overall still good, cool color. But see, this is what I like. I pick this up. It keeps the background interesting, right? Interesting. Let's Rather than having just a dark background. Now, some of you are going to like dark backgrounds. And that's fine. But, you know, this, I want to I wanna introduce some of these tones. That's what I'm looking for. More than anything else is these tones. Tones. So, you know, you look at his painting, which is absolutely gorgeous, and it really is rich and bring forth. And I can capture a lot of that look just by dropping in some more cools. But some of these warms through here are really going to play against what's happening in these uh, this cool that's going to come here. Now, I'm going to put some of those warm notes in there, but this is really playing against it, if that's if you know what I mean. And so, and that's what I'm looking for in this particular painting. I want to get some of that through here. I want to get some of these cools I'm going to be putting back up there. And let me show you what I mean. So we know that, you know, that 
uh, the metals there are going to be the burnt sienna and the blue, but heavier on the blue, right? And uh, maybe a little violet and stuff, but this makes our metal, basically our metal colors here, right in here. Let's not mix it up too well. Okay, that's, that's going to be some of our metal colors. Maybe just a touch of blue and a purpley color, just for giggles into that. But I want some of those notes, those, the colors of the metal. See the colors of the metal back in here into some of these notes as well. And uh, don't mix it up too well. But, you know, and in the, um, some of the artists, especially the Impressionists, they would just come around and just tap some of it in like that just to bring those those notes, those color notes in. And, you know, yeah, you can certainly do that. But uh, And then incorporate them. Bring them in and incorporate those notes into the painting here. Try not to do it too much because it'll blend it all out, right? But try not to do it too much here and... So, but whenever I introduce a light color note, especially if I'm on the shadow side, so I'll just pull through this a few times, being very careful not to blend that completely that note out. And then I like to come back in, especially after it's dark, after it's dried. But I like to come back in with my cooler note, my cooler colors that I had over here and set those reset those cool colors painting right into those if that makes sense and so it kind of sets those colors in so that looks really neat let's get a bit more of that here a bit of extender so I'll really pound some of that heavy right in here with that that this is the shadow the shadow side of that and that will really see how that just pops that whole thing this is where he keeps it the darkest so I'll just go through and see I'll leave some of those other notes but I'll paint into them slightly pushing them into the painting if that makes sense and I'm watching it all happen here I'm watching to, and to see if you know if it works and it is but also how much interest my background like this can afford to have that now you got to remember these light notes are going to dry down right they're going to dry down so we want to be a little careful and i'm going to have leaves that are going to cover majority of that up but i want some of this in here because it breaks up that background even more Right, and I love that through there like that. So you can see how that just works all of that in. And then, of course, I've got more and we can, while that's wet, if I wanted to, we can use some of that, that gray right there with some of this red tone to help tone it down and stuff. So I had this bigger rose. He had another smaller one right out over here which might not be too bad to incorporate one right back in there but we just barely paint it guys we don't need what are we painting for more than anything else i tell you this all the time and everything we're painting for color i don't want to paint for something interesting i'm painting for something that's going to contrast this if i go out there and give perfect edges and stuff to that it's going to advance it in my painting and I don't want that. In other words, let me just show you real quick. So if I if I come in here and if I give any kind of edge, you know, any kind of edge, is I'm going to bring this forward. So uh, especially if I go really light. Let's go really light right here and put a light edge onto this. So if I bring this petal up like that, you see it starts to come forward. So And I don't want that to happen too much. So let's just soften out this. We'll put some light, like maybe this is a backed, turned, a little rose right here, right like that. And we don't need that much. That's the, that's the most beautiful thing about painting rose compositions that I've learned over the years, 
is you don't need so much there that's going to say that that's going to be a rose. And sometimes with the farthest elements that are the furthest out, they're the ones that you paint the least. And they're the ones that actually end up being the prettiest because you paint them the least. <laughs> if that makes sense, it does. <laughs> and so, you know, I could put that one out there. His is a little different. I'll leave that one like that. But see, can in, we can take like a real soft light green, yellow green, burnt sienna, right? We can just tap on and, you know, and pull in like a little stem right in there that will set that into the composition here. We can set a few little stems in to the composition, not into the flower, but uh, yeah, you know, he, he stacks them up in a few areas and stuff. But we have some lighter roses up there. I've got some light red here that would be perfect up there. So we could have some red. We could carry this white more of a gray, white one, right up here too, that would be pretty. Here, softer, lighter white. Another white one carrying up there. And not much, because the majority of the, the roses here, the, the real fun ones are done, right? They're, they're right in the center, so. We've got those. Let's put a little bit of shadow onto this one. We'll paint this one up and around. And build the bowl here. Just so you can see how I'm gonna approach these. Sometimes when that color's wet, I'll go ahead and paint into them so, because it's really easy to paint into them. You know, you might want to put just a few marks of red or color back here to say that there's more roses and stuff going on. Uh, you know, he has, compositionally, he has another little rose bud right up over here. You might want to drop one in there, but I'm going to put a rose coming out here on the table here on this side as well. I'm going to do that. But, uh, yeah, that's use up some of my white so I can reset my palette here. I'm gonna, here we go, go set the, the idea of these roses here. And just a, a shape of them. What is it that makes the the rose more than anything else is that center right now he closed up his center i think i'm going to keep this one a little bit more consistent to what's happening in my other roses here and i'll open it up a bit so i might even open it up more like this one so which means bringing the petals in a little bit differently a little cool which may, so if you're going to open that one up, what you have to do is you slide, so you see the center goes towards the back edge if you want to close it down. The center goes more into the center of the rows if you want to open it up. So let's open this one up just because we can. And I think we should. We'll open this up. We'll let some of this shadow sit over there. We'll start to open this one up a bit more. Not close it like the one he did. All right, and uh, we'll do some softer colors back here that sit behind that one. So all these colors will pull in like this, pull in, pull in. Soft, kind of soft gray colors. Maybe you even add some more of these into that. But we'll pull this rose in here. Maybe a bit of an edge so it comes forward there. And then soften. Here's the idea of that rose. 
that might be kind of pretty. It's got a, a little bit big. It climbed a little big on me. So, um, you know, and you want to change that. How do you go about changing that? It's easy. You use an eraser, which the eraser is always your background. So, I just come in here. And I start adding some background around. Let's get a little darker. This is a pretty color here. Just pushing that right into that, shortening that down, letting that shadow and this come together right there. You know, sometimes I'll let everything dry and just uh, let everything dry and come back and put even more different colors on it and really drive a lot of interest. Let's get that deeper shadow, which is our blue and our brown matter. Here. Soften that. See, that'll push that open a bit. Let's just put a bit of that in there. That darker color. That's good. See, small down the rows fits the composition a little better. We'll let some of those edges stay soft. And uh, I'll add some more to that rose. It's really wet. When a rose gets really wet, it's hard to paint. So I'll add some more. Let's get some of that brown in there too. And I uh, have to see. Here's, oh, this white has a little bit left in it too. Maybe we'll put some. I need just a little bit more here. And. We'll add some of that lighter color here that we uh, have on this other rows across the way. So that carries that up there. That might be kind of pretty. But see the depth of color, guys? That is the thing that I work on the most. And it's something that I have been working on for the last several years, just getting more paint into my paintings. And it's one thing that I... I really like the mousse, but I think I need to get just, and I like that soft edge, but I want to get just, he's bigger, so I want him maybe have a, just a little bit more paint into the front of the antlers and stuff. So, And that's what I get after looking at it for a while. Now I'm going to pinch wipe my brush and just lift off some of that extra there. I'll leave that. And softer, warmer color here. Maybe a bit of the light there. Right like that. That's kind of pretty. And it goes with this other rose that's here. But it, yet it's not overpowering it. It's sitting back behind it here. And uh, which is kind of what I wanted here. We'll add, we'll leave some of the pinks. But I'll turn this around a bit. So I'm looking always for that rounding shape, right? I'm always looking for that rounding shape. And up towards the, the front up here, we'll hit that light. Right? We'll hit that light. Let's push a little bit of a pedal there. And uh, you can push... You can draw, you know, even with your shadows, right? Even with your shadow colors, you can come back and draw some of these softer little colors there. That's really kind of pretty, leaving him like that. May oh, no, we need that warm, darulite red kind of touch right in there. Look at how that, see how that brings that whole, you see it a little bit, see it carries that color through right up there, right? Isn't that neat? Yeah, so there we go. Okay, so we're out of time on this particular video, okay? So we'll do another one. Um, and I'm going to finish some of these other roses out through here just like that. And then uh, with the next one, we'll come back down in here into the center. 
and we'll work that container again and I'll show you the cloth and all that kind of stuff. We might have to break it into a few segments so that uh, I can get everything done. But uh, yeah, so we have what? This is three hours into the painting. That's not too bad. Three hours into the painting, setting this look, setting everything we want. I love that. That's that's going kind of what I want, that warm. See, it's warmer, especially down in through here and what he has, and I love that. I just love that blurry, okay? So if you like these kind of series, boy, leave me a comment down there, okay? I mean, uh, you know, I have a lot of artists here that like the landscapes and the seascapes and the wildlife and, uh, you know, some, uh, the florals and stuff. But leave me a comment. I like to read those every morning, guys. I get my cup of coffee and I come. I can't answer them all because I get them from across the spectrum. But I do love reading them and, and uh, you know, sitting there in the morning with you guys and reading those comments and stuff. I, they help so much. But, um, and don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe. Click that little bell if you want to be noticed when I do a new video, okay? So now that we're coming out of the summer and I'm going to be, my, my grandkids are going back to school, I'm going to be filming a lot more with you. So, you know, I'm looking forward to that because I got a lot of ideas. I got a wolf there. And I got a cougar that I want to do. And we still have to paint Mount Rainier and into the uh, landscapes stuff. So we got a lot to paint. <laughs> we got a lot, a lot of stuff I want to paint. Oh, and I got to do that trumpeter swan. I wanted to do that trumpeter swan too. I have all of these drawn up too. But uh, yeah, a lot of more stuff to, to think. So hopefully you can start seeing it come together here. And we'll do it. Uh, we'll try to finish it up with the next one. If not, I'll carry on another one. All right. Thanks very much, guys. Don't forget to comment, and I'll see you on the next one. I'll try to have it up tomorrow, okay? All right, thanks.